you guys welcome back to as told by Kenya in today's video I want to talk about some TV Tuesdays are always my TV video and I watch two shows over the weekend that I want to come discuss with you and I want to talk about Portia and her man and everything going on with that but first I want to talk about the show that has quite literally changed my life Traders US. I know Traders goes on in other countries. I don't care about that. I don't care about that. I am only talking about Traders US that comes on on Peacock. I watched the first season over the weekend and it has completely changed my life. I want to start by just saying this is quality television. I am a reality TV show buff. I watch the reality shows within reason. Like Kenya is not watching The Bachelor. I am not watching The Golden Bachelor. Kenya is not watching no baddies. Kenya's not, I'm not doing nothing on goddamn on what's what's the name? Zeus. I ain't doing none of that damn shit. That ain't none of me. But when it comes to the reality competition shows, Oh, I am there. You guys know Survivor is probably my favorite television show of all time. I love Survivor. I've seen almost every single season of Survivor. I I watched the earlier seasons. So up until about Big Brother 14, I have seen every season of Big Brother. And then after Big Brother 14, I've come in and out. But I always pay attention to Big Brother. So I have seen Big Brother. You guys know I like the challenge. Like I watch the competition shows. So when I found out some of my people from Traders, and then of course you guys know I like reality TV, TV people from reality shows that I watch, I found that they were all going to be on Traders. I was like, Traders is a show I need to watch, but it has been really hard for me to sit down and watch television because I'm reading, working, doing all types of things. I'm always, con I play video games, like I'm always constantly consuming media. So like, I haven't really had a time to watch my reality shows, but I finished the last season of Survivor the week before, and so I was like, now it's time to do Traders. Every weekend, I'm trying to eat through some TV shows, so I'm like, now it is time for me to begin Traders. So I started Traders season one, and it had some people I was so happy to see. Suri is one of my favorite, one of my favorite reality competition show contestants of all time. I love Suri. We know Suri from Survivor, Survivor what? Uh, Panama? Heroes versus Villains. Uh, what was that other season? I know she came back for um the one where Sarah won, whatever the name that one was. Oh, what a terrible season. Um, and then she came back for another one with Ozzy, whatever that season was too. Sari has played Survivor four times, right? That's four, right? I think she's played Survivor four times. Yeah. Uh, so I was happy to see Sari. Then you have Stephanie. Stephanie has also played Survivor three times. Her tribe got decimated in Palau. Then they brought her back for what? Guatemala? And then she came back for Heroes vs. Villains. Every time Stephanie came back for Survivor, it was worse than the last time she was there. She was worse than the last time she was there. And then there were some other people from Big Brother. I remember Cody from Big Brother, all of that. So, like, we have Rachel, obviously. Like, I remember, like we had some characters, and I was excited for this. I want to start by saying the best thing about Traders, at least Traders Season 1, I can't speak on Season 2, Season 2 is on right now, is the cast. A lot of times when you get things like Survivor, my issue with Survivor, I think the Survivor cast are way too game body. There are very few genuine relationships on Survivor because everyone is so game body. The, the challenge, I think the challenge, every contestant has like too much history. And so it makes it weird. There's too many pregame alliances. Big Brother is always about race. Like I think for some reason, Big Brother out of all the reality TV shows, they can't get out of their own way about their own prejudice and stereotypes. And that's what fucks up Big Brother cast. But I think for some reason with Traders, this cat, the cast works so well. You have the people who are just regular, regular people. And they bring this levity to the show. Like, they are so bad at it. <laughs> they are so bad at the show that it just makes it feel good. Like, they get so invested and they stop seeing this as a game. And then you have the people who are like like been there a while and so you get to see 
a more a more grounded level of their game because there's not all these different layers like on Big Brother Survivor and all these other shows you get to see a different level of gameplay where they have to be personable and you just get to see how they maneuver like and like with their intelligence that I think is so good so getting these regular people getting these reality stars then you got the reality stars that are like from Bravo so the Brandies and the Kates then the Ari from The Bachelor you get them who are kind of just on like you know light-hearted shows I guess and so they come in here and they kind of have their superficialness that they bring to the show and you get to see these people from different walks of life all coming together and it was just so good like it was just so good what I loved the most was how in it people got at first it was kind of just campy like the first few episodes are just a little campy you can kind of see that especially on the first season for the U.S. one people are like how is this gonna go how is this going to work you can see everyone wasn't fully sold but after like the third trailer gets kicked like the third faithful gets kicked off the show you can see they like we gotta figure this shit out people are getting mad that they're um that they're being called a traitor spoiler alert the best traitor kick out was the Shelby kick out because what this show does is it plays on your own um it plays on how you view people. It plays on like hive mentality. That's that's the that's the social experiment of trainers. It's like a hive mentality thing. Like, are you willing to go against the grain? And the Shelby kick out was so interesting because they only thought Shelby was a trainer because she wasn't hanging out with him. And it's a lesson in how quick you're willing to believe something just because it fits a narrative you already want to go with. Because Shelby wasn't hanging out with them, it was easy for all of them to believe that she was a traitor. But then you have someone like Kate. Kate hates everybody, so she's hanging out with Shelby because she don't want to hang out with the rest of them. And she doesn't believe Shelby's a traitor because it's just like, she doesn't have, she's not blinded by the same bullshit they're blinded by. And it's just like, y'all all turned on this person who y'all loved in the beginning, who none of y'all thought was a traitor in the beginning just because she wasn't hanging out with you. And so it's like, are you willing to go against the grain? And if you're not willing to go against the grain, will you throw your own friends like under the bus to do it, you know? So even like, um, Andy, who I have a huge crush on, Andy, they had Rachel, they were in like this, like, um, this challenge and like these bugs were falling on them and Rachel would really had their back. And Andy was willing to throw that away and not see the genuineness in Rachel, even though Sari was trying to tell her, like, see the genuineness in Rachel. They were willing to not see it because they already had these preconceived notions that Rachel was a traitor. Rachel was just there. Justice for Rachel. Rachel is such an interesting reality show character. Every time she comes on, she's so interesting because... Rachel fits into a specific mode, but there's all it's all she, there's something about her that is so genuine and you can tell Rachel cares about people Rachel cares how she's perceived by people and she has a good heart That's always been at the root of Rachel. So I love seeing Rachel on TV and justice for Rachel The character on the show if you see if you haven't seen traders, I'm sorry The character on the show that bothered me the most in season one was Quentin Quentin was the black guy on the show Oh, I'm going to cut him some slack because Quentin is not a reality show star. Quentin is just somebody off the street. Quentin annoyed me so much because Quentin just wanted a fucking friend. Quentin just wanted a friend and any personality that he gravitated towards, he couldn't see past their bullshit somebody I think it was Stephanie Stephanie came to Quentin and was like what if Christian is the traitor and Quentin was just like huh huh like he could never <laughs> he couldn't see past his own bullshit like Quentin was too smart for his own good like Quentin would have his sights set on someone and like he would stick with that and I'm just like Quentin what's going on here like you have the worst read on the game somehow Kay has a better read on the game than you and so like that's what I love but then like they would do something where they would redeem themselves you know it was so good and I love this like everyone was equally as bad at the game the only person who was just like master was Sari because Sari but like everyone even Rachel and Stephanie who have both done reality TV like Rachel usually picks up on stuff they couldn't pick up on the fact that Sari was a um Sari was a traitor and to us because
as we know, it's so obvious. It's so obvious that it's Sari, but like none of them are willing to see it because they just see Sari as this motherly figure. And I find it so interesting. Also, the stereotypes and tropes you choose to play up. The reason why Sari always makes it far in Survivor, except one time, the reason why she made it far in Big Brother, and the reason why she will make it far in Traders is because Sari plays up this motherly stick. Sari is not that old, especially when you have someone like Brandy in the house. I think Brandy might be older than Sari. I would have to look that up, but like Brandy, but no one sees Brandy as motherly. Sari plays up the motherly role, even though there are people who are either just the same age as her or bar she's barely older than them. She's always going to play up the motherly role because she knows that's how people always want to see her. As long as she fits exactly what they want her to be, she can use them. And it's so brilliant. Sari just understands people and that, that's how she's always been able to make it for Sari bad at competitions. Sari ain't like the so goddamn nice. Like Sari, Sari has her own mind. Sari's not just going to go what people say, but people are willing to listen to her because they feel like they have a mother out there because everyone is away from their family. Sari turns into their mother and she plays that up and they, they fall for it every time. No matter what she does, what show she goes on. I hope that we, after this season, maybe we can get a Traders All-Stars because I want to see so many many of these people back. Sari could never come back because like just too masterful but I want to see some of these characters who are on this one come back. I want Rachel to play again. Like I just ah I, I can't wait to watch season two next weekend. I just enjoyed myself so much. The competitions became so good. At first I was hit or miss on the competitions. A big thing that's so good. Jeff Probes needs to take some notes. Jeff Probes needs to take notes. Like it was just odd. It was perfect. If I could change anything, I haven't watched season two, so I don't know if they've changed stuff. I do think, especially in the first season, it was kind of really hard until like the numbers started to dwindle to know who a traitor was I was trying to put myself in the faithful's position it would be hard I think now if you watch the show like the guy kept saying like notice the patterns they were so focused on stupid shit that they weren't focused on big shit like notice who people are voting for Christian and Sari never threw anyone's name out yet they were always on the right side of a vote <laughs> they're always on the right side of a vote, but never throw anyone's name out. Clearly, they're not invested in finding the traitors. They're invested in just making y'all like them. And they couldn't find those patterns. Like, they voted, they wanted to vote out Shell because she, like, didn't care that Cody was a traitor. She didn't show any emotion. I'm like, you're looking at the wrong shit. <laughs> you're looking at the wrong shit. Look at how people, like, look at the incentives people have to find the traitors, you know? And so I do think maybe kind of like the mole, because that's kind of what this is like. This is like the mole. On the mole, the mole, during the missions that they do on the mole, the mole is actively trying to sabotage the mission because the more money they don't get, I think the mole gets. That's how it kind of works that way. It's weird. But I think that's kind of how it works. I think there should be something like that with traders where, like, you get to see the traders, like, trying to sabotage them, trying to, like, not give a damn about the mission. So, like, you could, like... Focused on people, what people are doing, the little things. But that could be me, like, trying to make something. The show is already great. The show is already great. I enjoyed it. Yes. Let's move on to Love is Blind. So I watched Love is Blind. Let me pull up all of the people. So you have, what, four couples, five couples? I don't even know. I'm thinking about, I don't even think I finished Last Love is Blind season. It kind of got snooze fest for me. So I didn't finish Last Love is Blind season. But I am going to finish this Love is Blind season because this Love is Blind season, ooh, we got some drama here. So the couple everyone is talking about is Chelsea and Jimmy. Um, here is the thing. I'm, I'm upset that the conversation has turned in to Chelsea's looks because of the Megan Fox thing because Jimmy is no catch. I'm not trying to be mean, but Jimmy is no catch and Jimmy don't deserve Chelsea or Jessica. Let's be very clear. So I'm mad that everything has turned into people saying like Chelsea's not attractive because it's like 
Jimmy? <laughs> no shade to Jimmy. I don't want to be nasty. Like, Love and Fine just makes you be that type of person. But the fact that Jimmy just get to get pickings is pissing me off. And you want to know what? Jimmy getting exactly what he deserves. I do not give a fuck that Chelsea told Jimmy she looked like Megan Fox. Y'all gonna have to stay with me real quick. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Y'all gonna clip this part and post it somewhere to get me dragged. Chelsea does not look like Megan Fox. I think it's crazy to say you look like Megan Fox if you do not look like Megan Fox. That's like me being like, I look like Kelly Rowland and I don't look like Kelly Rowland. Like we both dark skin. Like maybe there's something about us that is similar, but we just don't look like each other. Like people are expecting like you to look like this person. If you say you look like someone, people expect you to look like someone. Do not come in my face and tell me you look like Beyonce and then we pull this thing down and I'm not staring Beyonce in the goddamn face. Like you're being unserious so saying you look like Megan Fox you better fucking look like Megan Fox and Chelsea don't look like Megan Fox let's be clear but if you close one eye and squint the other y'all see something similar in their face I think there is something in their face that is similar they do not look alike but if you squint one eye I could be lying <laughs> Like, it's crazy to say because they don't look like. I am not on Chelsea that she should not have said that. But, but if you do squint, it's not that when they look, something about their face is similar. Okay, I'm gonna leave it there. <laughs> I'm gonna leave it there. But, um, when she said that, Jimmy already had this idea in his head that he, she looked a certain way and that's why he was willing to cut Jessica off and I think when Jessica said like you're gonna regret doing it she was throwing shade at Chelsea you're gonna regret doing this that made him think like "Ooh, what does Jessica look like but here's my thing Chelsea and Jessica I do both think Jimmy looked better especially because after when they were all meeting on the beach one of the one of the women who are not in that couple like she said that she thought Jimmy looked different based off of his voice and so it had me thinking about Jimmy's voice Jimmy's voice does kind of make it sound like he looks a little bit different so I actually think Chelsea and Jessica both thought Jimmy would be more attractive than he was so maybe Jessica dodged a bullet there I don't know but I think after they got people are getting on Chelsea for being insecure I think Chelsea knows how Jessica's drop dead gorgeous Chelsea knows that Jessica is drop dead gorgeous and she knows that Jimmy could have been with Jessica and I think that's I think Chelsea's insecurity is not stemming from Jimmy it's stemming from the fact that she knows Jimmy could have had Jessica and she doesn't think she looks better than Jessica. So she, but Jimmy's never seen Jessica. So like, that's why Jimmy's like, why does she keep saying this? But this is making Jimmy think even more, how the hell Jessica looks? So he's wondering, does Jessica look good? Um, Jimmy, and then people are getting on Chelsea for continuing to ask how uh, does Jimmy like her? But Jimmy also is not reassuring. Like, everything he says doesn't feel like he actually believes it. Even when he was around the boys, he was just like, I'm the happiest here. Like, who are you convincing? Who are you convincing you to happy? He like, be serious right now. Like, be really serious right now. So, I just... I think y'all are being, like, some people are laughing at Chelsea. Like, they're laughing that Jimmy doesn't find her attractive. Chelsea's not a villain yet. Like, she could turn into a villain. But, like, laughing at her because this this man thinks she's unattractive. Like, y'all, we're, we're dipping our toe a little in the massage. And, like, Chelsea hasn't done anything bad. Like, some people are treating Chelsea like she's a villain. Her worst thing is lying about looking like Megan Fox. But, like, she ain't done nothing to nobody. Like, I don't know. Y'all being a little weird about that. Next thing we have is A.D. and Clay. I might be a little bit on the unpopular opinion. I like A.D. and Clay. I've seen people say they don't like A.D. and Clay. I like A.D. and Clay. The issue with A.D. and Clay is that A.D. and Clay for damn sure don't need to be married. They need to just date. A.D. and Clay already look like they're dating. They look like two people you would see who are dating and that's what they need to do ad and clay just need to date for a few years to see if they could get married they both need to work on their self you have ad saying she doesn't think she's capable of love because of everything that happened with her father and then clay clay just young and naive child so like clay just need to get some more you know get a little long in the tooth and so like that's their that's their biggest issue there is something about clay that it does seem a little bit insincere like i do think there's another shoe i'm waiting to drop with clay so i am I am looking at them a little weird, but I think they look good together. We can talk about it. Let's get on AD's body.
legs and hips and body, body. Get Candy in to sing the song. AD got body for goddamn days. Every time, I'm no better than a man. Every time they showed a full angle of her, I said, you better work. You better work, mama. AD looks good. What the fuck was going on with AD and Matthew? All you swirlers out there, stand down. I was so happy when Matthew was not on this goddamn show. Like, I, no, no, that, no, absolutely not. Chelsea should have chose Trevor. Chelsea 100% should have chose. The, the couple that I think is a little bit more chaotic than people are talking about is Jeremy and Laura. Laura doesn't like Jeremy. Laura thinks Jeremy is corny. Laura thinks Jeremy is corny and she keeps like making jokes about the way she thinks he's corny, but like she really means that shit. She like, I know girl, I know girl. Like I, I, I see, we see each other. Like she really mean, like she's making it jokingly, but she thinks she, there's things about Jeremy that she wants to change. And then Jeremy is doing this thing that some guys do where like they try to be appeasing like, they try to appease you all the time. No, you're fine. You're fine. You're great. I'm not annoyed by you. But the minute the mask comes off, they're, like, sick of you. Like, they, they don't know how to be normal. Like, either they get drunk and they, like, are over you or they're just so happy-go-lucky. You're great. And it's just, like, you could just be normal. You could tell me when I'm annoying you, but he can't do that. So, like, he's not being genuine. He's not being genuine. And Laura, I think, finds issue with Jeremy. So, I think that couple is way more chaotic than we're giving them credit. I do not think the two of them are a match for one another. Every time Laura talks, she's talking about something she don't want Jeremy to do. And it's just like, okay. And Jeremy just has to, like, take it on the chin. He's just taking it on the chin and taking it on that little weird bean dip thing what was that at the beach when Laura made that joke about AD everything about what they were doing with AD's body at the beach I was uncomfortable everything they were doing with AD in the body I was uncomfortable Jimmy was being weird Chelsea was being weird Laura was being weird everybody fucking was being weird like absolutely not um, that was not for me. <laughs> um, who else? So yeah, I think that couple is way more chaotic than we're giving them. Then the next couple we have is Kenneth and Brittany. I think they're like our ray of sunshine. I think they're like the happy couple. I don't think they're going to have any issue. I think it's so interesting and stay with me. It's so good when like two like losers find each other. I don't mean losers that in their losers. I mean like losers in life has like dealt them bad hands. You can just tell they've been through a lot in life and like they found each other. I think they work. The only thing that wouldn't work, I think Kenneth is a little hesitant about dating a white woman because of how people will perceive him for dating a white woman. Um, but like, they're fine. They work. I think they both have good intentions. I hope they go the distance. Look at me rooting for a swirl romance, but like I am, I hope they go the distance. I think that they will work. So I like them together. You know, only weird thing about Kenneth and Brittany, I would like to understand what Brittany mean when she meant when she said Kenneth identifies as black. What the fuck does that mean? Do I identify as black? No, I don't identify as black. I just am black. And then when she was saying that, um, but I don't care about the color of his skin. What what the fuck is that? But as in like, yeah, I get it. He black, so I should be I should be weary, but I'm not. <laughs> like that sentence. I don't think she meant it. Like she was trying to find the right words, and she found all the wrong ones. <laughs> she was looking through the bag trying to find the white the right words to say she don't care about dating a black person. But she pulled out all the wrong ones. Like he's black, but he identifies as black. But I don't care about like but <laughs> what is this but? <laughs> She was like, what do you mean? Like, oh, she's he's black and like, oh, I know, I know that come with a lot, child. Like, no, he's black and I embrace that. I think that's what you're looking for. I embrace him and I think we're going to work together. So that was, um, there's really nothing else to talk about with Love is Blind. I can't wait for the next few episodes to get put up. You're probably wondering why I'm not talking about that last couple because no notes. I have like, what am I supposed to say about them? I don't even know. Johnny and Amy? Um, I forgot they were there. I literally forgot they were there. When they got to wherever the vacation destination was, I was just like, oh, they're here. <laughs> like, I totally forgot them from the pods. Like, just not interesting. Um, there's this nothing like, okay, great, fine. So, Love is Fine, those episodes were quite intriguing, quite intriguing. Can't wait for the next ones. Next thing we have, and I'll leave you on this, Portia has officially announced that she is coming back to Real Housewives of Atlanta. I really don't want to. I'm sorry. 
I remember Bolo. I remember Portia and Kenya going at it the last time. It's not as interesting as y'all make them out to be. The only thing interesting about Portia coming back to the show, I do want to know what's going on in Portia's life. I genuinely, genuinely, I want to know what's going on in Portia's life. Now, did y'all catch that tea about the stuff coming out about Portia's husband? So Portia's husband has keeps getting denied citizenship because of some crimes he allegedly committed back during the Reagan administration. Here is the thing. I am not about to sit up here and call Portia's man out of his name for some crimes he committed in the 80s like I'm just that's just not my ministry I'm sorry and I'm also not invested in like him like I don't know I hate when just for the sake of gossip people start to invest in like the 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 like immigration system and people being deported and people like like that's not me like absolutely not and like he was trying to make his way in America and was doing strange things for change. Like, who's to say who Simon is as a person in 2024 is what I'm saying. And, like, that being the thing that is holding up his citizenship, like, there's something in there that's actually, like, really nasty. Because the fact that he, what, was married to Fallon, married to Portia, and I think been married before then, I don't know. He should get citizenship based off of that. So, like, something in there is nasty anyways. And I refuse to, like, align myself with the nastiness of the immigration system because I want tea on Portia. Like, that's just not me. Uh, Simon just being married to Portia, he should be able to get citizenship. But, of course, what's holding it up is his crimes and all of that type of stuff. And that's just, we, I could go on a whole thing about how the goalpost constantly moves on who gets citizenship and who doesn't. But, like, if that's something you find interesting, if that's something you find interesting, I guess that's something for you to hold on to. But, like, they're crimes he committed in the 80s. Like, Reagan was president. <laughs> like Reagan was president like I don't know like is that exciting to y'all like is that it like it doesn't change the fact that Simon like is doing fine now except for the fact he don't got citizenship like and I guess we can like learn because like here's the thing I want Simon to get citizenship I'm never gonna root for someone not to get gain citizenship in a country they want to live in like y'all are weird and nasty so like what do I get from that except like I don't know y'all got it though if that's y'all thing y'all got it anyways I will see you guys in the next one peace